Course in Miracles Live. We are walking with Jesus, holding his hand and, and listening and following and opening our hearts to Jesus and really to the precious love of God that that is our birthright, our inheritance. So today we're going to go into lesson 45. God is the mind with which I think. And this is so beautiful because uh, really the Holy Spirit was given as the comforter and the instructor. And basically this lesson is really telling us God is the mind with which I think the Holy Spirit is the mind which with, with which I think. It is that identification with that thought system of love that is real and true. <laughs> That's, that is truth. Today's idea holds the key to what your real thoughts are. They are nothing that you think you think, just as nothing that you think you see is related to vision in any way. There is no relationship between what is real and what you think is real. Nothing that you think are your real thoughts, resemble your real thoughts in any respect. Nothing that you think you see bears any resemblance to what vision will show you. You think with the mind of God. I remember I've emphasized a lot of times too that that Christ is an idea in the mind of God. He's starting off the second sentence. You think with the mind of God. Therefore, you share your thoughts with him as he shares his with you. They are the same thoughts because they are thought by the same mind. To share is to make alike or to make one. Nor do the thoughts you think with the mind of God leave your mind, because thoughts do not leave their source. Therefore, your thoughts are in the mind of God, as you are. They are in your mind as well, where he is. As you are part of his mind, so are your thoughts part of his mind. Where then are your real thoughts? Today we will attempt to reach them. We will have to look for them in your mind because that is where they are. They must still be there because they cannot have left their source. What is thought by the mind of God is eternal, being part of creation. Our three five-minute practice periods for today will take the same general form that we use in applying yesterday's idea. We will attempt to leave the unreal and seek for the real. We will deny the world in favor of truth. We will not let the thoughts of this world hold us back. We will not let the beliefs of the world tell us that what God would have us do is impossible. Instead, we will try to recognize that only what God would have us do is possible. We will also try to understand that only what God would have us do is what we want to do. And we will also try to remember that we cannot fail in doing what he would have us do. There is every reason to feel confident that we will succeed today. It is the will of God. Begin the exercises for today by repeating the idea to yourself, closing your eyes as you do, then spend a fairly short period in thinking a few relevant thoughts of your own keeping in mind the idea of the day. 
after you have added some four or five thoughts of your own to the idea, repeat it again and tell yourself gently, my real thoughts are in my mind. I would like to find them. Then try to go past all the unreal thoughts that cover the truth in your mind and reach to the eternal. Under all the senseless thoughts and mad ideas with which you have cluttered up your mind are the thoughts that you thought with God in the beginning. They are there in your mind now, completely unchanged. They will always be in your mind, exactly as they always were. Everything you have thought since then will change, but the foundation on which it rests is holy changeless. It is this foundation toward which the exercises for today are directed. Here is your mind joined with the mind of God. Here are your thoughts one with his. For this kind of practice, only one thing is necessary. Approach it as you would an altar dedicated in heaven to God the Father and to God the Son. For such is the place you are trying to reach. You will probably be unable as yet to realize how high you are trying to go. Yet even with the little understanding you have already gained, you should be able to remind yourself that this is no idle game, but an exercise in holiness and an attempt to reach the kingdom of heaven. In the shorter exercise periods for today, try to remember how important it is to you to understand the holiness of the mind that thinks with God. Take a minute or two as you repeat the idea throughout the day to appreciate your mind's holiness. Stand aside, however briefly, from all thoughts that are unworthy of him whose host you are and thank him for the thoughts he is thinking with you. Ah, God is the mind with which I think. Beautiful. And to support us with today's lesson, the section that came to me from the text is from chapter five, section two, the voice for God. Healing is not creating, it is reparation. The Holy Spirit promotes healing by looking beyond it to what the children of God were before healing was needed and will be when they have been healed. This alteration of the time sequence should be quite familiar because it is very similar to the shift in perception of time that the miracle in introduces. The Holy Spirit is the motivation for miracle mindedness, the decision to heal the separation by letting it go. Your will is still in you because God placed it in your mind. And although you can keep it asleep, you cannot obliterate it. God himself keeps your will alive by transmitting it from his mind to yours as long as there is time. The miracle itself is a reflection of this union of will between Father and Son. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of joy. He is the call to return with which God blessed the minds of his separated sons. This is the vocation of the mind. The mind had no calling until the separation, because before that it had only being and would not have understood the call to right thinking. The Holy Spirit is God's answer to the separation the means by which the atonement heals until the whole mind returns to creating. The principle of atonement and the separation began at the same time. When the ego was made, God placed the mind 
in the mind, the call to joy. This call is so strong that the ego always dissolves at its sound. That is why you must choose to hear one of two voices within you. One you made yourself, and that one is not of God, but the other is given you by God, who asks you only to listen to it. The Holy Spirit is in you in a very literal sense. His is the voice that calls you back to where you were before and will be again. It is possible even in this world to hear only that voice and no other. It takes effort and great willingness to learn. It is the final lesson that I learned and God's sons are as equal as learners as they are as sons. You are the kingdom of heaven, but you have let the belief in darkness enter your mind and so you need a new light. The Holy Spirit is the radiance that you must let banish the idea of darkness. His is the glory before which dissociation falls away and the kingdom of heaven breaks through into its own. Before the separation, you did not need guidance. You knew as you will know again, but as you do not know now. God does not guide because he can share only perfect knowledge. Guidance is evaluative because it implies there is a right way and also a wrong way one to be chosen and the other to be avoided. By choosing one, you give up the other. The choice for the Holy Spirit is the choice for God. God is not in you in a literal sense. You are part of him. When you chose to leave him, he gave you a voice to speak for him because he could no longer share his knowledge with you without hindrance. Direct communication was broken because you had made another voice. The Holy Spirit calls you both to remember and to forget. You have chosen to be in a state of opposition in which opposites are possible. As a result, there are choices you must make. In the holy state, the will is free so that its creative power is unlimited and choice is meaningless. Freedom to choose is the same power as freedom to create, but its application is different. Choosing depends on a split mind. The Holy Spirit is one way of choosing. God did not leave his co children comfortless, even though they chose to leave him. The voice they put in their minds was not the voice for his will, for which the Holy Spirit speaks. The voice of the Holy Spirit does not command because it is incapable of arrogance. It does not demand because it does not seek control. It does not overcome because it does not attack. It merely reminds. It is compelling only because of what it reminds you of. It brings to your mind the other way, remaining quiet even in the midst of the turmoil you may make. The voice for God is always quiet because it speaks of peace. Peace is stronger than war because it heals. War is division, not increase. No one gains from strife. What profiteth a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? If you listen to the wrong voice, you have lost sight of your soul. You cannot lose it, but you can not know it. It is therefore lost to you until you choose right. The Holy Spirit is your guide in choosing. He is the part of your mind that always speaks for the right mind, the right choice, because he speaks for God. He is your remaining communication with God, which you can interrupt, but cannot destroy. The Holy Spirit is the way in which God's will is done on earth as it is in heaven. Both heaven and earth are in you, because the call of both is in your mind. The voice for God comes from your own altars to him. These altars are not things, they are devotions. 
yet you have other devotions now. Your divided devotion has given you the two voices, and you must choose at which altar you want to serve. The call you answer now is an evaluation because it is a decision. The decision is very simple. It is made on the basis of which call is worth more to you. My mind will always be like yours because we were created as equals. It was only my decision that gave me all power in heaven and earth. My only gift to you is to help you make the same decision. This decision is the choice to share it because the decision itself is the decision to share. It is made by giving and is therefore the one choice that resembles true creation. I am your model for decision. By deciding for God, I showed you that this decision can be made and that you can make it. I have assured you that the mind that decided for me is in also in you and that you can let it change you just as it changed me. This mind is unequivocal because it hears only one voice and answers in only one way. You are the light of the world with me. Rest does not come from sleeping, but from waking. The Holy Spirit is the call to awaken and be glad. The world is very tired because it is the idea of weariness. Our task is the joyous one of waking it to the call for God. Everyone will answer the call of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. For the Sonship cannot be as one. What better vocation could there be for any part of the kingdom than to restore it to the perfect integration that can make it whole? Hear only this through the Holy Spirit within you and teach your brothers to listen as I am teaching you. When you are tempted by the wrong voice, call on me to remind you how to heal by sharing my decision and making it stronger. As we share this goal, we increase its power to attract the whole sonship and to bring it back into the oneness in which it was created. Remember that yoke means join together and burden means message. Let us restate, my yoke is easy and my burden light in this way. Let us join together for my message is light. I have enjoined you to behave as I behaved, but we must respond to the same mind to do this. This mind is the Holy Spirit whose will is for God always. He teaches you how to keep me as the model for your thought and to behave like me as a result. The power of our joint motivation is beyond belief, but not beyond accomplishment. What we can accomplish together has no limits because the call for God is the call to the unlimited. Child of God, my message is for you to hear and give away as you answer the Holy Spirit within you. Wow, <laughs> that is, uh, the Holy Spirit is under, God is the mind with which I think, yes. The Holy Spirit is the mind with which I think. In heaven, I have no thoughts apart from God, and when I think only with the Holy Spirit, then I remember God is always for me, for the real me, for the Christ me, for the waking up to the Christ me. <laughs> it's the capital self, the Christ divine self, that is where the truth is. That's what's real, true, it's innocent, it's the eternal, it's changeless. It's, uh, it's an amazing, glorious uh, experience. It's the direct experience of I and the Father are one. Yeah, it leaves, uh, leaves the world behind with a, with a smile and a gentle nod. 
it's like you're just kissing illusions goodbye and saying, no more, <laughs> no more. So this is the inspired life. I remember that's that's how I got into this whole teaching. I was raised Christian, a, a loving Christian family, a, a beautiful church uh, in the summertime, going to uh, Bible camp. Uh, and then uh, when I got into my teen years, uh, working towards what seemed to be called uh, confirmation in the church when I was 18. And, uh, and then a period of uh, real deep soul searching, you could say, uh, searching for my soul, searching for my spirit through my uh, university days at, uh, in Cincinnati. And, and basically it was a lot of clearing, a lot of emptying out, a lot of, um, you might say trial and error experientially, you know, opening up my mind, opening up my heart with an eagerness to be shown the way. And then the culmination of those um, 10 years of full-time university study, then, uh, yeah, it was like an answer to a deep prayer in my heart for a real direct fast shot, a real direct path to God. And that's when the Course in Miracles came into my life, into my hands for the first time. Yeah, that was really beautiful in La Jolla, California, Southern California, not too far from San Diego. It was just like a tsunami wave of love washing over me and a very strong feeling that my life would not be the same that my, my way was set in towards God, towards truth, towards uh, freedom, towards happiness in, in a deep way that I couldn't fully understand at this point, but I actually could feel it very strongly. I was like being pulled. I felt the call. I was inspired. I was swept away. I was swept off my feet, <laughs> and and thus began this uh, yeah wonderful, amazing journey without distance to a goal that has never changed. It's always the present moment. It's always now, no matter what our body seems to go through or what situations circumstances seem to come before us. It's really just answering the call of our heart to remember God, remember this divine love. So, and yeah, then you go along and it seems like with each phase that comes from studying the Course to practicing these deep teachings of Jesus to letting go and then letting go some more and then letting go again and yet again and yet again, it's just a journey of letting go of everything you think you think and think you know. It's a journey of emptying your mind of all thoughts, of all beliefs, of all, uh, you might say, ego, scraps of ego and, and scraps of ego emotions, all doubt thoughts. You're just letting them up and letting them out, letting them go. And so we're here to cheer each other on in this uh, journey without distance. In, in this recognition, it's just a present recognition is all it is. As Jesus says, enlightenment is but a recognition, not a change at all. It's just a remembering, it's a recognition. And we give thanks for this pathway that has been given us. We pray for help, we pray to escape the the distortions and deceptions of the world. We pray to escape the pursuit of illusions and say, no, I would, I would only accept the truth. Show me the truth. Take me to divine love. Let me feel a love that never ends. Let me have a glimpse of eternity that I may remember the fullness uh, and the expansiveness of eternity. 
So thank you for being on this journey together. We are walking hand in hand, arm in arm, side by side to the light of truth. Every day it's a let go. Yeah, we've come to see that. Every day we have to let go, let go of believing that we're in charge of anything, let go of trying to control anything or anyone, uh, let go of our uh, egoic ambitions for the future and let go of our egoic regrets from the past. <laughs> Time goes by slowly, softly, gently without its touch upon us in this present moment. We sink beneath the timeline. We come within to the acceptance of the love of God. God bless you. Go forth today. Remember our lesson for today. God is the mind with which I think. Love you. I'm going to be stepping away from uh, from my gadgets again, my computer, my phone and uh, iPad, and uh, just having some beautiful prayer time gently going in within and, and going with the flow of that. So thank you. I'll be back though. I, I love you so much. <laughs>